Well, good morning. Uh, today is a Sunday morning. Uh, safe to say that there are millions of folks that are uh, getting all the gussied up. And uh, I think if that is your intention, is to go to church this morning. Uh, and, and that's, I was in this thing for well over 20 years. And uh, so you should trust for the Lord if that's that's your mentality, it's your understanding. And uh, But anyhow, aside from all that, most of you that would be watching this is probably already know how I feel and what my conversion is was um, about church and the system set up that uh, man is uh, following today. Uh, on occasion I'll join in some of the uh, the chats that go on uh, see something you feel led to do it or whatever uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say something or bring another point to to view uh, in a conversation. Um, I think if things, if people would start opening up their mind and heart to the Holy Ghost, to the Word, and, and, and not what they've been preached, taught uh, by man, um, and if you step back, away from the system and I call it the system because that is exactly what it is it's a it's religion and uh, I know in the upbringing that I was uh, come up in you know we always frowned on religion because we didn't think we were part of that religion um, and since God revealed to me um, what what this is um, it is very much a religion. There's too many things that are borrowed and, 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 and kept in tradition of man, uh, such as hierarchy. And that was kind of the subject that uh, kind of came up the other day. And um, I normally respect what um, this person says, and he's even now. Uh, I think since I had placed those scriptures together a few times and uh, he's read them, uh, I think he was even on board with that and he's, he's even uh, countered some conversations that he's had with those same scriptures and made me kind of feel good about it um, in the sense that somebody's getting this thing. Uh, but somehow with the tradition and, and, and whatever position he might be in, um, he has watered down the actual verses and when I say watered down I'm saying that uh, instead of taking the scripture for what it really is he has watered it down in the sense that well it's not absolute there's that word absolute authority um, so with that, uh, that one word, which means that gives him an out to say that, yes, uh, church hierarchy is well and accepted or approved by Jesus. Uh, and I don't see that the case. I don't see that by Jesus at all. Um, I don't see where provision was made for that. Um, Jesus was very adamant. If you love mother, father, sister, brother, uh, more than me, you can't follow me. Um, unless you put all aside to follow me and I become the authority, not among authorities um, and not by extension man uh, because man was not entrusted again um, as the old law that's why the law um, in Hebrews and um, in that it, it couldn't make the comers there into perfect and so when you look at that you're not being able to 
satisfy uh, God. And so almost sins were placed on pause. Um, they were pushed back year by year. And that's, that's the Old Testament understanding and in scripture uh, by a priest man. And uh, when Jesus came, he became that uh, middleman. He became that bridge for pure, um, unadulterated uh, sacrifice that the blood of goats and bullocks could never remove sin, but by his precious and perfect clean blood, unsinful by any nature um, would be able to present us a living sacrifice, a, um, a sacrifice that could remove sins, that would satisfy uh, through the sonship to the Father, um, that flesh um, being taken to the cross for the propitiation, uh, the removal of our sins, um, cast into the sea of forgetfulness, uh, to never be remembered, no more. Uh, and so when you look at that, and Jesus, the disciples, um, James and John's mother came to Jesus and he said, what do you, what do you want? What do you think? And what's your, what's your question? And she said that, uh, well, I just want my two sons to be on your left and right hand uh, in heaven. And he said, it's one, it's not for me to give. Um, two, they can't drink the cup that I drink. Uh, indeed, later on they will. Um, but he was saying that we're not like the Gentiles. We're not like the world. We're not like the... the uh, this, this system, a worldly system. We uh, do not have one above the other. And he said, it's not going to be so amongst you. And he said, uh, there's benefactors in, in that type of system. There is, uh, there's corruption in that type of system. And that's what Jesus was telling them. And he said, but it's not going to be so among you, among my chosen among those that I have called. We are not going to be that. He said, here's the point. Here is the point that that in my kingdom, it's going to be just the opposite. If there were a rule, it would be that the greatest would be the least. And, and I, I have come and showed you that me being your master have become your servant. And that would be the way that it would be if we were to inject that theory or that type of system. But he said, it's not so. We're not going to do that. And it's not going to be named among you to be that way. So the whole point that he was driving home is that we're not going to have a system where one is greater and lesser than another. It wasn't the fact that that there was a system that was that was reversed but the 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 point was is that we're not dealing with that system here we're all one we're all among each other are going to be equal and who uh, doesn't want a chance and, and you want to come back and i'll give you the other scriptures but uh you want to come back and say he had brought it out in other parables where the one that he, he had hired servants and he negotiated a, a said price. And then later on in that day, um, after the other was working for that one pence or whatever uh, wage was agreed upon, and, and the others came in later and they agreed upon the same uh, value. And at the end of the day, the other ones was complaining that, hey, I've worked all day and they get the same reward 
that I get. And Jesus said, did you not accept that? That was that was what you accepted. Um, why, why does it matter to you? And so that is exactly um, the whole point here is the fact that, you know, that further backs up what Jesus was trying to say is that you 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 may think you've done more and you should get more uh, but this these this system is not about me I'm not about that system and so when you look at those things and then people want to bring forth a church a a hierarchy of, of, of Christians um, so Matthew 20 26 through 28 this is, is one of the one of the scriptures he said but it shall not be so among you but whatsoever whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister and whosoever will be chief among you now he knew that wasn't going to be popular <laughs> he, he knew that what he was doing it was was thwarting thwarting the idea and what better way to thwart the idea for someone looking for power and, and authority and say, you're not going to be master, you're going to be servant. Well, you know, that person would probably say, yeah, okay, okay, I get it. I'm not interested anymore. Um, yeah, never mind. I, I don't think they're taking that deal. Um, but Jesus said, if, if, if that's what you want to invoke... If you want to invoke this method of ideology, then reverse it. So those of you who want power and those of you who want to exercise authority, you play the role of slave and let those that are lesser than you play the role of authority. So if, if there is a system this is the way that system would run in my kingdom. But the whole point here was that it is not my system. And this is not the way that we are going to do things, period. So again, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life ransom for many. So that's, that's one of the scriptures. And the other one, Luke 22 and 26, and there is one in Mark. And I don't, it, the one in Mark is, 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 so if you know your Bible, if you know your history, you know that Mark was written before Matthew. And they feel that many of the things from Matthew were put into, or from Mark was uh, put into Matthew. Um, so it was borrowed or duplicated in, in a sense. Um, the point is, is that Mark was before Matthew uh, written, and the scholars or whatever you want to call them uh, feel that uh, Mark was available to the writer of Matthew, and they drawled off of some things, and they, they've, uh, um, I guess, brought more detail in some things. So either way, um, it's part of the gospel we have today. Um, so anyhow, uh, Luke says, but ye shall not, but ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve. And that's at Luke 22, 25 and 26. So you got Matthew 20, 25 and 26, and you have Luke 22, 25 and 26. And, um, so... And if you if you look at some of my other messages, I, I do put out there the, the mark. Um, I, I'm not sure where. I think it's um, I think it's in uh, chapter ten of uh, in Mark chapter ten, uh, forty three maybe. Um, I think that's right. But uh, you can look it up there too, and you'll see a, a, a harmony there. So when you look at those things and you see that, um, and let one another um, be subject, he said, uh, so what, what goes along with what Jesus said? So this is the scale, this is, this is the, the master um, plate 
writings that you must compare everything after. So what I always say is like, well, what, what makes the Gospels more important than what Paul said or what was written in Peter or whatever? And uh, um, what makes the Gospels is the life of Jesus, the witness of his doings, his comings and goings and, and the miracles and things. These, this was the, the purpose of the apostles the purpose was that they lived breathed and slept among jesus and they watched him they were eyewitnesses this was what the apostleship was made for was that there was a witness a validation um, of what jesus said and did and this was brought forth so without that um, any and everything that Paul, any of the apostles, and uh, I don't scripturally see Paul as an apostle, um, not even to the Gentiles. Um, Peter covered that, and Peter should have covered that because that's who Jesus gave authority to do that and bring the gospel, and he did that in, in, in Acts 10 to Cornelius, uh, the Italian band, um, and they were not Jew. And so it was laid upon Peter by Jesus um, when he said, The gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. And that's a spiritual church. And so when you look, when you read, when you understand those things, you'll see that Peter was the one who brought it to fruition. And he was the one that was sanctioned by Jesus that he would have the keys and he took the keys he gave the message in acts 2 and 38 he he preached to them what jesus what the holy ghost uh, came upon him to preach and uh that was not peter at that point it was a vessel being used by god and and i understand you know some of you will say well you know under the Holy Ghost, men could speak and, and things. But let me tell you something. The rules were laid by Jesus. Jesus said no other foundation, no other rule set, no other guidance would be laid than that that was laid with Jesus being the chief cornerstone, Jesus being the head, amen, of the church. And so man does not report to apostles. Man does not report to to other men. Man reports to Jesus via the Holy Ghost. And that's what keeps us on track. And and you can you can read um first John, uh I believe it's uh ten somewhere in there, um about actually it's later in the scripture than that. But uh, you'll see that uh, at the end of that scripture um, that we are to be taught by the Holy Ghost. And that's what Jesus said, the Comforter. When the Comforter has come, he will lead and guide you in all truth. He will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. And that is your guide. That is man will come and go. Man will fail. And, and Jesus brought that out through Peter, the one that he chose to have the keys to the kingdom, that message at that moment that Jesus would, would come upon him through the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And where Jesus was, said, I will, I'm walking with you, but after I leave, and it's needful that I go, that I will send the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. He will lead and guide you. Amen. And he said, "What? don't, don't think upon what the things you're to say, but the Holy Ghost will speak. And, and, and those were the words in Acts 2.38 that, that Peter spoke to open the kingdom of heaven to man. And that is the way to get in. And that is the gate that you must have that key to get in. And through that birth channel, through that rebirth that Jesus spoke in John 3 and, and, and uh, 1 through 8 
talking to Nicodemus, you will see that you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to enter and even to see the kingdom of God. And that was Jesus' words. And that was fulfilled through Peter when the Holy Ghost came upon him in Acts. And so if these things validate what Jesus said, then you know that they're ironclad, that they are true. And you will feel and know that the Spirit will be with you because Jesus said the Spirit will, will, will confirm his word. It will not go against it. So when you see that Jesus says, you're not going to set up kingdoms. Uh, you're not going to have one above the other. And then what Jesus said was that you love your neighbor as yourself. So so this here is is the the essence of humility is what Jesus was talking about. He talking about going over and saying, hey, I'm your servant to your neighbor. No, that's not what he was saying. He's saying to be humble, um, to to prefer one another before yourself, and 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 to to that's how you 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 show love. That's how you show uh, empathy and, and and concern for your fellow uh, neighbor, and. So first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And when you do those things, you're not placing yourself at the, at the whim and the will of somebody's authority. That is not what Jesus ever meant. You answer to one, and that is him. You have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and you have one master. And, and if you read the gospel, you'll see that it's exactly what Jesus is telling us. And, and that's the meaning from this. And, and you pray about it. You, you, you seek God. And the Holy Ghost, which is true, will, will confirm these things as the word moves forward. And you start writing his word on the tables of your heart. And he will be alive to you. He will, will bring out those things. He will make you, he will confirm it by his word, by the spirit. And, and you, will, you will know that it's him. He wants to commune with you and I. He wants to validate himself to us. He does not want us lost. He does not want us to be in, in disarray. Um, and for the sake of, of comfort, for the sake of, of getting along and, and, and unity, man has erred. Man has erred very much aired. They, they have set up institutions. Um, I, I ponder this. I really do. I, I, I think about it. I think, you know, I'm not just going off on a whim. This is not a light decision and understanding of mine. I, I have sought after and I have looked as, as, as Solomon said, you know, look at the whole situation. And he said he stood back and he seen that all was vanity. And if you look and read what he did and what he ended up saying, it's vanity. Because man has set up their own kingdoms of these, these buildings and churches and, 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 and put burdens on other men and women in and, 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 and our society today to, to build bigger churches. Oh, this is, a, this is a place. This is a storehouse. No, Jesus came to remove that that's old law stuff and and of course it's 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 very desirable to this flesh to to go and be a part of something be a part of somebody and and to to get accolades and and oh i got a certificate oh i gave 50 bible studies and oh look and the, when you read matthew 23 when you see the railings against the hypocrites, the Pharisees. When you go through that, you see what Jesus was telling us. And if you don't get that, and you want to go and you want to just skip over all that that Jesus was trying to teach us, and then you want to say, "Oh, well, then, then you know, uh, you want to pass the baton to to Peter and to Jesus allowed Peter to to fail three times." before he gave him that message 
and he wanted us to know that man can and will fail you. And what was the first thing that Jesus told them when they said, what, what are we, when are we going to know these are the signs of the times? He said, take heed, don't be deceived by man. So Jesus, that is, that is very, very solid what Jesus was talking about. The only one that you can trust is God through the words of Jesus, validation of the spirit of the Holy Ghost. You have to be led by the Spirit to become the sons of God. And so um, I just want you to know, I, I know that we, we delved into this. There is so much more that ties into this. There is so much more that we could talk about. Um, I'm surprised it took so long at, at this, but it is not necessary for us to understand the word and what Jesus was saying. And, and if I have to go into this over and over again, um, it is worth it because man is not your salvation. There is no pastor, there's no priest. And when you look at all these things, I would say like Solomon, it's vanity. And you say, well, there's some good comes out of it, this and that. But is there, if you are led down the wrong path and it doesn't lead to heaven, what good have you done? You know, we call that deception. That's what the scripture calls deception. Um, and and the, the devil himself will come as an angel of light. And he's going to use the word of God. He's going to use those things. And so when we, when we do those things, when we understand what this is all about, we have a much clearer picture of what we're to do and what God asks us to do. And... Uh, God bless you, God bless your family, and I just pray that that some way, somehow, that this might have helped you today. And go in peace, in Jesus' name.